It is that time of year again. And as always, it is up to you and I to figure out what is the best healthcare plan for us. Enrollment is coming to an end, you guys. It is time to pick your plan if you haven't done so already. Do I choose the same plan I chose last year? How expensive are the plans this year? A lot of premiums went up. So let's talk about these costs. What do they mean? The U.S. healthcare system costs, that's no surprise. But today we're going to help you maximize your financial and your physical health so that you get the best outcomes. Be sure to click subscribe for more health tips. You guys, it's that time of the year. And like every year, we have to sit down and make this one choice. And every year, it seems like we're starting all over again, trying to figure things out. For most of us, most states are closing enrollment this week. So we've got to figure it out. We've got to choose a plan. And like every year, we're juggling between co-insurances, co-payments, deductibles, maximum out-of-pocket costs. And it all seems, once again, so confusing. Don't worry, I have a few tips to make it a lot easier for you. Before you start choosing a health plan, there's definitely one thing you should do first, and that's figure out what is your current health. Assess where you are in your health and your health goals. For some of us, we have chronic ailments and our goals may be based on those particular disease disorders, knowing how frequently we need to go to the physician, perhaps we're utilizing other allied healthcare sources or providers, and we know that we're going to have frequent visits this year. Perhaps we're undergoing treatments for our lower back pain with a physical therapist. Perhaps we're on a weight loss journey and we know we're going to have frequent visits with a nutritionist or a registered dietitian, or perhaps we're undergoing our IVF cycle and we know we're going to be going in for frequent visits and labs and other types of assessments like an ultrasound. So we know we're going to be high utilizers of healthcare. Or perhaps we know that we've done pretty well with our health. We've been exercising, we're eating healthy, we're losing weight, or we're maintaining a healthy weight. And all we really want to do this year is continue with our preventative services, making sure that we have all our screenings on time, making sure we're undergoing recommended screenings, whether it's our diabetes screenings, checking our blood pressure, checking our cholesterol perhaps, or checking our weight in the office, or in fact, going for our yearly mammograms or our biannual mammograms or our pap smears. So it's time to kind of figure out where you are. What are your needs for your healthcare this year? What are your health goals? Do you need to utilize services frequently? Or are you kind of going to be managing a lot of your health on your own? And you're only needing your typical preventative services like your annual visits, and you just want to have the basic health care. Or perhaps you have uncontrolled diabetes or some other uncontrolled condition, or perhaps you're undergoing chemotherapy this year, or perhaps you're undergoing some type of evaluation for a condition or a complaint, and clinicians are still trying to figure out what's going on or what's the cause of your underlying condition. And you know you're probably going to see multiple specialists, or perhaps you have a chronic disease like diabetes, and you're either uncontrolled and you know you're going to have frequent visits so that you can titrate your medications to be on control, or perhaps you're undergoing lifestyle changes. You're going to need serial surveillance to make sure that those lifestyle changes are actually working for you. Or perhaps you have a chronic disorder like a autoimmune disorder that affects multiple organs and you're going to have multiple visits to different types of specialists to make sure that those end organs are continuing to do healthy, right? So these are some of your examples of people who may have high utilization of healthcare and may want to look at different plans that meet those specific needs compared to those who may have a low utilization of healthcare and may just want their basic health plans. And of course, we know that a lot about health is unpredictable. So these are the circumstances that are kind of predictable, easy to assess and come up with a plan. We know that we do have to give room for the unpredictable, right? So we know perhaps if we have multiple underlying comorbid conditions, that we're more likely to have those unpredictable things happening. Or perhaps we are a parent, we have a child or a teenager, and we know those are the years where we tend to fall, break things, and have a variety of accidents. So you want a health plan that covers for those. 
Um, but for the most part, most about health um, are sometimes unpredictable. So we can't plan for just about everything, but we can certainly do our best with the information we currently do have. So let's go through some of the basic understanding. So a lot of healthcare plans are going to have various levels. You're gonna see bronze, silver, gold, platinum. Those are kind of your standard levels. Let's take a pause just to go a little bit deeper. Don't get caught out there with those Bronx plans because they're so alluring with their low premiums, but then when you actually show up for your medical care, you're hit with these high bills and you're like, wait a minute, what just happened there? And the opposite with those gold and platinum plans. So make sure you're choosing based on the whole picture and not just one factor. And silver, of course, are the plans kind of in between those hybrid plans that may even have some special cost savings. Some of them may be attached to an HSA, for example. So why is it important for us to choose a healthcare plan? There are some very concerning statistics when it comes to the cost of healthcare. So we know that one in seven people are in debt because of medical bills. In fact, that amounts to over 100 million Americans are in debt as a result of healthcare or medical debt. We know that anywhere from 40 to 60%, depending on the sources, 40 to 60% of bankruptcy is because of healthcare costs or medical bills. That's a big deal, which means we got to make wise decisions when it comes to our finances, specifically our health-related finances. And one of the best ways to prevent yourself from ending up with extravagant costs and going into debt is by planning your health for the year and planning what type of healthcare plan is best for you and your family. So let's talk about some of the out-of-pocket costs because that really is the key to what makes a lot of us choose the plans that we end up choosing. So we know that the deductible is the amount that you are required to pay before your insurance kicks in and decides to pay anything for you, with one exception, preventive services. So preventive services, for the most part, are covered by your healthcare plan and your deductible is not bound to those services. The other key cost that kind of raises our eyebrow is our monthly payments, our premium. So our premium is that amount that you month for your healthcare plan. It's kind of like your standard cost, essentially. It is the one standard cost for everyone under that healthcare plan. It's sort of your set cost for having health insurance. And then we have these co-insurance or co-payments, right? So when we go to a doctor or we go to our laboratory, perhaps, or an allied health facility or the hospital, we end up having to pay a certain percentage of our health care. So we end up paying $20, $25 when we are seeking specialty care, and we pay that amount when we arrive for our appointments. Or perhaps we're in the hospital and we're required to pay 30% of that hospital bill. And then you have your out-of-pocket maximum. Your out-of-pocket maximum is the total amount or the maximum amount that you would have to pay towards your health care before your insurance company will then pay 100% of your covered services. So what does it mean to have in-network, out-of-network? Well, different physicians are enrolled in different healthcare plans, meaning they've applied, they've been certified, and they are now listed under those, those health plans. Depending on the type of health plan that you have will determine whether or not you have the option of seeing an out-of-network healthcare provider or whether you are restricted to those who are registered under that plan. Another factor that may determine what type of healthcare plan we choose is whether or not we're in a self-funded plan or an employee-based healthcare plan. So certainly some people may make different choices depending on whether or not they're paying directly for their healthcare or whether their employer is paying for their healthcare plan. So almost 55% of Americans are enrolled in an employer-based healthcare plan. And interestingly enough, the number of those who are enrolled in a self-funded plan or a self-funded health plan has not really changed much over the last five years. Another important statistic, which is really interesting, is the fact that while the majority of those who are enrolled in an employer-based plan are enrolled in PPOs, PPOs only make up a very small percentage of the plans in the Affordable Health Care Act. And the types of plans, they all kind of sound confusing, whether it's your EPO, your HMO, your PPO, your POS. 
kind of confusing and say that 10 times fast, right? So let's talk about what these types of plans are. So an exclusive provider organizations, which is your EPOs, are plans in which you are restricted to receiving services only by those providers, whether it's your primary care clinicians or your specialists or a hospital that is enrolled in that plan with the exception of emergency services. A health maintenance organization is a healthcare plan that restricts typically your care to only those providers who work for or are contracted by the plan. Sometimes they may restrict you to live or work within the service area of the plan. Now, as I mentioned, it is called a health maintenance organization. So the focus of these plans are usually preventive services or health maintenance care. Did you know that there are over 175 HMO businesses in the United States? Point of service plans are those in which you pay less if you use a provider or hospital that's within the network for that plan. And typically they require you to receive a referral to see a specialist and the referral is obtained from your primary care provider. So let's talk about PPOs, those preferred plans in which employees are taken advantage of while they're enrolled in an employer-based health care plan. And why are they so popular? Not simply because they're called preferred provider organization, but because they give the flexibility in the ability of someone to be able to see someone that may perhaps be out of the network at an additional cost. But for the most part, like most of the other plans, there's a preference or a low cost associated with seeing someone, whether a provider or hospital service that is within the network of the plan. So as you kind of get the picture, all of these plans, lower cost or less restriction, if you're seeing a provider, a clinician, specialist, primary care doctor, or utilizing a hospital that is enrolled in that specific plan. The more flexibility you want, the more expensive that plan may be. If you are someone who like to choose your provider, don't like the restrictions of having to use a provi provider that is contracted or working for a healthcare plan, and you want the opportunity to see a provider that you may just choose to use, but may not perhaps be in your plan, then you may prefer a PPO. PPOs, however, tend to be a more expensive premium now that you know what that premium means. So all in all, whether you're choosing an HMO or a PPO, the key is getting the healthcare plan that is right for you. Well, health has its own seasons, right? So from year to year, your desired plan or your better match plan may differ based on your medical needs. So one year, you may just be seeking preventive services, whereas another year, you may actually need to see a clinician or utilize healthcare services more frequently because of your healthcare goal and needs. So be flexible. A certain plan last year doesn't necessarily mean that you need to stick with that plan this year. Perhaps your needs have changed. So making sure that you're able to assess not just your need, but the needs of your entire family. The purpose of this video was just to give the individual a sense of how to look out in the upcoming year towards your health goals and being intentional about what you feel your needs are for the year. And based on those needs, determining what plan is the best match for you. This is Dr. T and I hope this video was helpful for you. Make sure you place your comments and your questions below. We'll be happy to answer any question that we did not touch in this particular video. And once again, we thank you as always for joining us. I'm happy to always be the hand behind the handle of Healthy Bump Club right here on YouTube and also the hand behind the handle of Healthy Bump dot Club on Instagram. We thank you for watching and we hope to see you in next episode. <laughs>